Hi there, it's me, Professor Bernstein. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about three main things. One, strategies for approaching reading assignments. Two, techniques for managing your time and maximizing your attention. And three, becoming lifelong learners. This video will also give you a clearer sense of where I'm coming from as a teacher, and you can definitely apply what you learn to your other courses, even to your professional and personal lives. As you've noticed, on the syllabus, I give you a clear sense of the time investment you need to make in order to really get into what you're reading. I started including this information because I realized that it's really easy to underestimate the amount of time it takes to really read something. When you read, you need to do more than just let your eyes move over the words on the page. You need to learn how to enter into a conversation with the author and his or her text. You have to give yourself time to absorb the material, to figure out what is being said, to try to analyze what the author is saying, and figure out where you stand in relation to it. This process takes time. Rushing through a reading is, for the most part, a waste of time. If you don't give yourself the time to really get into what you're reading, it's highly unlikely that you won't remember what you've read. I speak from experience. When I was in college, I had a very hard time reading textbooks for core classes. In one of my psychology classes, I set aside two hours to read the 30-page chapter to try to take it all in, all the details, all the facts, and everything on the page would seem important enough to highlight. And two straight hours seemed reasonable to me. But I was wrong. I would walk away from that time having done the reading, but I'd feel overwhelmed. My mind felt stuffed and swamped, and I didn't wind up developing a strong knowledge of anything in the text. So I wasted my time. So it's not just a matter that of, of, of needing to invest a certain amount of time in each reading. You have to make smart time investments. I want to take a few minutes right now to tell you about my number one time and concentration strategy. And it's one that I discovered during college and have continued to refine and use um, almost every single day in one way or another. So in general, my number one tip for you is that it's best not to try to do all of your reading and or studying at once. Don't get me wrong, I love the idea of being able to sit down at my desk, get down to business, and accomplish as much as possible. However, it's really hard to give your full attention, your best attention, to anything for more than 20 or 25 minutes. So when I was in college, I started a series of personal concentration experiments, I realized that after 20 to 25 minutes, my eyes sort of started to glaze over. I'd read the words on the page, but I wasn't fully present. I wasn't fully absorbing what I was reading. Now, I didn't want to set aside even more time for studying, but I also realized that I didn't want to waste my time either. So I started setting up multiple relatively short power study sessions. I'd read or study or write for 25 minutes and then take a five minute break. Sometimes I just go pour myself another cup of coffee and space out for a few minutes. Now that I'm juggling a full time career, launching my own company, volunteering, and being a wife and a mother, I sometimes use these five minutes to take care of something around the apartment. Um, it's really amazing to me how much you can get cleaned in five minutes. Um, now, I'm not going to try to fool you either. Sometimes I just let myself troll around on Facebook to see what people are up to. But I just give myself five minutes, and I've learned how to control myself too and stay limited to those five minutes of fun. When I come back to my book or task, I wind up feeling more refreshed. I get back into the work by giving myself just a minute or two to recall what I've already covered and then move on. And so what you're doing is you're sort of building review and contemplation into your process of reading. And this will save you time if for classes where you have um, exams. If you do this on a regular basis, it's going to be a lot easier to study for your exams. There's going to be a lot less cramming because you will be making this information, um, getting it deeper into your mind on a regular basis. The other day, actually, someone told me about the Pomodoro technique 
which is designed to eliminate the anxiety of time and enhance focus and concentration. This technique is similar to what I've been describing, so if you're intrigued and want to get much more detailed information, you can go to the Pomodoro website and download a free copy of the book. I'll post the address to this site um, in the news section of our D2L page. I'm also going to post the link for the free online timer that I've been using, uh, the egg timer. Anyway, this time and concentration technique has been really effective for me as well as for many of my students, so I encourage you to try it. You'll remember more of what you read and have, believe it or not, a more pleasurable time doing your work. I love hearing the results of people's experiments, so let me know what happens. Um, tell me what happens when you try this technique and post your response in the reply box at the bottom of this video. Okay, so I want to draw this video to a close by sharing with you some passages from the speech Billy Collins delivered to students graduating from Holy Cross College. Billy Collins, the fine-looking fellow in this photograph, was our country's poet laureate from 2001 through 2003. Being selected to serve as the poet laureate is a really big honor. The main task of the poet in this position is to help make poetry a more integral, a more sort of day-to-day -day part of Americans' lives. So one former laureate worked to get poetry posted in airports and supermarkets. Billy Collins started Poetry 180, a project that, in his words, makes it easy for students to hear or read a poem on each of the 180 days of the school year. In the news section of our D2L page, there's a link to Poetry 180. Feel free to check it out. Right now, though, I'm just going to read you some quotes from his speech. He says, Don't graduate. Don't leave behind the habits of study, contemplation, and open-minded discussion and introspection that this college has encouraged in you. Critical reading and thinking are lifetime activities not merely exercises performed in the enclosed context of a school. He continues, Many of you are ready to enter a career or the ranks of a profession, but what I would ask is that you continue to keep alive your inner schoolboy or schoolgirl, the one who never gets tired of looking things up and finding things out. I would like to convey to you the notion of endless self-schooling and perpetual discovery. I'm not going to offer an analysis of what Billy Collins just said. All I ask is that you take into consideration what he said and find ways of tapping into the pleasures of endless self-schooling and perpetual discovery.